Greetings, everyone out there in TV land or YouTube land. Just wanted to say hello to my students, letting them know that I'm thinking of them. I'm hoping that you're all healthy and you're doing well. Uh, come to you live from the studio here on 5404 Monterey Cove Northwest, Montano Production Company, USA. So I'm here today to share with you briefly what we'll be doing today, Monday and uh, leading into Tuesday tomorrow. So let me go over our itinerary for today, Monday, and for Tuesday, uh, Monday 413 and Tuesday 414. So if you'll stand by, I'll give you a camera shot of our agenda, our itinerary for today and for tomorrow. Okay, leading to tomorrow. So bear with me, I'm new at controlling a fairly different type of camera. It's called a pod camera. In any case, I wanted to welcome you, first of all, uh, to Distance Learning with Mr. M. And for Monday, we'll be discussing reading today, along with spelling and vocab, vocabulary. As you know, we left off on page 9091 on Monday uh, when we found out we won't be coming back to school for the rest of the year. And so I'm going to pick up there. I uh, also wanted to share with you uh, that we'll be uh, doing that today. Uh, and so uh, uh, it's important that we stay in touch, okay, so that uh, you know what's going on uh, daily, Monday through Thursday. And so for Tuesday, lean into the mall, 414, we'll be talking about uh, our writing. What we'll be doing for writing will be, of course, our daily journal. And our topic for daily journal, I'll give that to you tomorrow, along with our BAW for spelling and your spelling words. Uh, and your reading summaries that you'll be doing once a week as we were doing uh, throughout the school year since the beginning, since the beginning of this school year, okay? Uh, I apologize if I'm <laughs> bouncing around here. I'm trying to get the wheel to turn. All right, there it goes. And so in any case, I wanted to share this with you so that you could follow with me uh, from day to day, okay? Uh, in the future, I'll be using a whiteboard uh, today. Uh, I was using this uh, particular chart, and I'm not liking the chart as well as I would like a whiteboard. That way I can erase and go along, add to it as we go along if we need to, okay? And so just bear with me. This is new for me. I know it's going to be new for you. And so as we get uh, going in the process here, we'll go and grow together. So we'll go and grow together, and so I want you to go and grow with me, okay? In any case, I wanted to welcome you once again. And I'm bringing the camera back online. And the camera will be back up here. And hopefully it's focused on me. And so, and my bald head. There we go. My forehead and bald head. In any case, wanted to share with you quickly uh, following our itinerary for today for Monday, the 13th. Boys and girls, it's real important to stay in, as you know. Now that you're combined at home, uh, stay in, think healthy thoughts, uh, take care of yourself, take good care of yourself, get out and exercise at least 30 to 60 minutes every day if you can. I'll walk your dog, uh, maybe jog around your bedroom if you want to jog around. I don't know if they'll let you do that in your house, but, and if not there, maybe outdoors. Uh, remember to maintain that social distance. They talk about six feet or better. Um, and so along with that, want you to also maintain your brain. And so remember that to keep a bottle of water nearby. Always keep that brain hydrated. And more importantly, make sure to have plenty of nourishment on hand as well, okay? Uh, one thing I wanted to share with you, first of all, before we get started uh, with anything, is your spelling. And the way we'll be doing our spelling won't be uh, the same as we were doing in class. So what I'm going to provide you with are your spelling words. I will spell them for you. Uh, your job will be to gather the meaning for those words and then to do B-A-W, build a word with those words, okay? Uh, if you choose to do so, you may choose to use them in a sentence, okay? Uh, and then, of course, uh, we'll have our spelling test on Thursday when we do a uh, review on Thursday for our reading assignments, our writing assignments, of course, our science project, okay? So let me start, first of all, by welcoming you to Benchmark, Grammar, Spelling, and Cab, okay? And so, 
You're probably wondering, man, this tram doesn't give a break, man. He doesn't let up. He's relentless. Well, I've got to stay on top of things. So I'm going to start with the short vowels that we discussed when we left, page 9091. And in our words that we started to discuss, but we never got a chance to go through, I went ahead and wrote them down once again, okay? And I have them here for you, and so I will spell them for you, and I will say them for you, okay? The first one, number one, P-U-B-L-I-C. Number two, benefited, B-E-N-E-F-I-T-E-D. Hmm, benefited. Number three, amendments. Remember, that's part of our reading because that was in our constitutional uh, reading and our U.S. government reading as well, okay? Uh, amendments, A-M-E-N-D-M-E-N-T-S. Number four, impressive, I-M-P-R-E-S-S-I-V-E, -S -S -E, impressive. Number five, citizen, C-I-T-I-Z-E-N, citizen. Number six, activist, A-C-T-I-V-I-S-T, -I -I activist. Number seven, topics, T-O-P-I-C-S. And lastly, number eight, insults, I-N-S-U-L-T-S, -S, insults. And so with these words, I want you to do your B-A-W, have those ready for tomorrow, for Tuesday. Make sure to get those those words in. If you don't have them today, be sure to have them tomorrow. Remember that this work I'm assigning you is work that I'm assigning you to do for the week, the duration of the week, so that you can stay caught up from day to day to day. That'd be wonderful. But by week's end, when we do review, I'm hoping to see all of this, okay? And how, what's going to be your evidence to me, showing me that you're completing this work, is when we do get together and we meet online, of course, uh, that you could show me some of your work online, okay? Uh, before, I used to have you complete sentences using these particular words uh, to fill in the blanks for the closed reading portion of our spelling. But in this case, uh, I'm going to ask you to just create sentences and writing them in your own context uh, or within your own context uh, so that you may use these words. Uh, what I mean by that is, for example, U.S. citizens are particularly uh, interested in their rights. And so that would be an example of one of the sentences you could use, okay? Or you might say, it is a citizen's duty to be both honest, trustworthy, and respectful of their country or their nation, okay? So those are just some examples that you can use uh, with your spelling words, okay? So those are your eight spelling words for this particular unit. Uh, and so uh, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, how you're doing. Uh, and if there's any suggestions you want to make about the spelling, how we could change it up. I know with the BAW that you can continue to do the BAW on your own uh, and uh, keep track of that. On Friday when we do our review, I will give you your spelling test so that uh, you could spell, I'll spell the word, and then you spell the word out on a piece of paper like we do with class, okay? So you'll have your eight words to study for this week, okay? Once again, those words are public, benefited, amendments, impressive, citizens, activists, topics, insults. And again, that was citizen, not citizens, citizen and activist, okay? And so that's for benchmark reading and spelling. Yay. I promised you today that I was going to read a poem for you, and so I'm going to keep that promise. And if I can get my book out. Let me see if you remember. Do you remember the book that I was going to read from today? Because the book was very special to me, and I shared that with you last time. So that book was Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. Okay. And this particular poem is called For Sale. A Sister for Sale. And it's my favorite poem in the book. I have several, but this one in particular. And it's written by, of course, my friend Shel Silverstein, who also does the drawings in this book or illustrations. And this is the book here. The book page is page 
page number 52. And this particular book I've had for some time. Okay. For Sale is the title of this poem. One sister for sale, one sister for sale. One crying and spying young sister for sale. I'm really not kidding. So you'll who'll start the bidding? Do I hear a dollar, a nickel, a penny? Oh, isn't there, isn't there, isn't there any? One kid who will buy this old sister for sale? This crying and spying young sister for sale. And there she is out in the corner of the page. And she is crying. But you know, it's important to have sisters as it is to have brothers because I I have noted that particularly with my grandkids. I've uh, they've been spending a lot of time with each other, brothers and sisters, now that we've uh, been restricted to staying at home. And so they've had to exercise a great deal of patience uh, being at home together, uh, cooped up in the house together. And so we look for a lot of things to do together, playing games together, drawing together, uh, reading together, and riding bikes together. And so going to the park's a lot of fun as well. Uh, so there's a number of things that you could do, uh, but keeping in mind to wear a mask and to wear gloves, of course, and then of course, to maintain that social distance. A lot of different responsibilities you're gonna have. So in that, I wanted just to mention that if you have a sister, don't sell her, okay? This is just a phone poem, which I really like. That way about a brother, a brother for sale. And not just a brother's for sale, but a sister for sale as well. So just wanted to share that with you, okay? Something I want to challenge you with is writing a poem. During the time you've been indoors, you've probably pondered a great deal about what's taking place. And so with that, and along with some of your words that you're going to be getting in your spelling word list both today and next week, you know, begin to start thinking about words you'd like to use in a poem or in a story. So uh, just food for thought, something to do Well, uh, you're at home now. And uh, maybe something you could share with me next time we meet, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I promised you I was going to share... A couple of pages from a, a book that I wanted to read to you today. And the reason I wanted to read to you today was because I'm hoping you're reading at home on your own. And I'm hoping that you have a uh, opportunity to do your reading uh, report, your book report, your reading summary, your book summary that I used to give you once a week. That was always due on Tuesday, and we changed it to every Friday. So on Friday, of course, we'll be... Uh, your opportunity to share your book summary with Mr. M, okay? If you forgot what the book summary looked like, I happen to have a copy of the book summary right here. Here it is. And so here's the book summary. And the book summary has everything that you can answer, starting at the top, who the book is written by, of course, who the author is. If there's an illustrator, be sure to put that in there as well. That's very important, okay? Put the title of the book that you read. That's very important. Talk about the characters in your book. Talk about the main characters in your book. Who were they? How many pages were in the book? Okay. How many pages were in the book? Very important to mention that. Okay. Um, and you're the reader. And so as a reader, you get to score the book. One star, two stars, three stars, four stars, five stars. The more stars, the better the book. Okay, and it's all based on your reading the book and you telling me about the book in your summary down below. So your book summary should include the key ideas and details of the reading itself. What is it you read about? What was the theme of your story? What was the idea, the big idea in your story? What was the story about? Um, and talk about that. Give me the beginning, give me the middle, give me the ending. Okay, how does it start? And how did it hook you? And then in the middle, what made it interesting to you? Um, and then in conclusion, how it made you feel? What did you come away with? 
Okay, and be sure to incorporate what the main idea or the theme of your book was about, okay? Be sure to include that in your book summary. And so we're very familiar with this book summary form. So you just follow the same format. You just do it on your own on the book report form and share with me on Friday, okay? Um, and so I wanted you to see that and how you would follow that right along with the book I'm going to read to you today. Now, you can choose to do your book summary on this particular book of mine, which is one of my favorites. I shared that with you last time. Juan Verdad is the man who couldn't tell a lie. And Juan Verdad was a very honest man, a very trustworthy man. He was the pillar of character counts. He stood out for that particular one called trustworthiness, the number one pillar that I think uh, that is so critical and so important, being trustworthy. So let me read to you Juan Verdad is the man who couldn't tell a lie, written by Joe Hayes, a very good friend of mine. And he's a New Mexico author, by the way, and Dan Fiedler who is the illustrator and he does some extremely beautiful look at the watercolor drawings that he did these paintings are actually prints but he painted them and so i'm going to read here the first couple of pages just to get you interested this is the beginning of our story Juan for is the man who couldn't tell a lie okay look at those illustrations okay in fact let me just position the camera where you can get a better view of the book. Let me just roll the wheel. There we go. Juan Verdad is, take a look at that adobe. So I, I live in an adobe much like this one, except it has a roof that's pitched that has laton or tin on top of it. And it's in a setting much like this. And it's surrounded by a lake. We have the Cajilon Lakes. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful home. And the fields aren't yellow. Our fields are green with alfalfa during the during the spring and summer. And in the fall, of course, it turns yellow with this. Okay. Juan Verdades, enjoy the story. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just position this. So we have both myself in there and the book. One late summer day, a group of wealthy rancheros, see them there? Were gathered in the village plaza, joking and laughing and discussing events in their ranches. One of the men, whose name was Don Ignacio, had a fine apple tree on his land. The rancher called the apple tree El Manzano Real, the royal apple tree and was extremely proud of it. It had been planted by his great-grandfather, and there was something about the soil it grew in and the way the afternoon sun struck it that made the apple tree flourish. It gave sweeter and more flavorful fruit than any other tree in the country round about. Every rancher for miles around knew about El Manzano Real, and each year they all hoped Don Ignacio would give them a small basket of his sweet fruit. To each one, Don Ignacio would reply about his tree, of course. How well is your tree doing, Don Ignacio? Oh, he would brag and say, beautifully, beautifully. My foreman takes perfect care of the tree, and every evening he reports how the fruit is ripening. There's his tree that he's very proud of, his apple tree. When Don Ignacio said this to his friend Don Arturo, the other man replied, Do you mean to say, Don Ignacio, that you don't tend your magnificent tree yourself? Hmm. 
How can you have such faith in your employee? Maybe he's not doing all he says he is. Maybe he's not telling you the truth. Well, Don Ignacio, Don Ignacio wagged his finger at his friend. He said, Mi capatas has never failed me in any way, he insisted. He has never told me a lie. Are you sure, compadre? said Don Arturo. Are you sure that he has never lied to you? Absolutely certain, compadre, absolutely certain. The young man doesn't know how to tell a lie. His name is Juan Verdades. Actually, Juan Valdez. But everyone calls him Juan Verdades because he is so truthful. I don't believe it. There never was an employee who didn't lie to his boss. I'm sure I can make him tell you a lie. Never, replied the proud employer, Don Ignacio. The two friends went on arguing good-naturedly, but little by little they began to raise their voices and attract the attention of the other men in the plaza. Finally, Don Arturo declared loudly, I'll bet you whatever you want that within two weeks at the most, I'll make this Juan Verdades tell you a lie. All right, replied Don Ignacio. It's a deal. I'll bet my ranch against yours that you cannot make my foreman lie to me. The other ranchers laughed when they heard that. Oh, Don Arturo, they said, now we'll just see how sure you are that you're right. As sure as I am of my own name, said Don Arturo, I accept the bet, Don Ignacio. But you must allow me the freedom to try anything I wish. The two friends shook hands. And the other men in the group agreed to serve as witnesses to this bet. The gathering broke up and Don Arturo and Don Ignacio rode confidently away toward their ranches. But (coughs) as Don Arturo rode along, thinking of what he had just done, he no longer felt so sure of himself. When he arrived home and told his wife and daughter about the bed, his wife began to cry. What will we do when we lose our ranch? She thought, what will we do? Don Arturo began to think he had made a terrible mistake. Yeah, I think he's contemplating the bet he made. Was it a safe bet? (laughs) Was it one he for sure knew he could win? Could he take what he thought he knew, a trustworthy man, and make him lie to his boss? (coughs) That's the question that needs to be answered. Do you suppose that Juan Verdades can be persuaded to lie when he's known nothing but trustworthiness all his life? Could he be bribed into doing it? Could he be conned or convinced into doing it? Possibly threatened into doing it? Or maybe, what's in it for him? Might he trade his trustworthiness for a lie? Things to ponder. Things to think about. 
in our reading of Juan Verdades, the man who couldn't tell a lie. Again, when we meet and we will do in our reading on Monday, I will read you the next four pages that lead into chapter two of the bet between Don Ignacio and Don Arturo. Uh, this particular book is a very special book for many, many reasons. But as I mentioned previously, I particularly like this book because of the fact that it teaches character counts. And one of the most important virtues I think it teaches is trustworthiness. With that, I trust that you are going to stay well and behave yourself and read at home. Strive to stay alive. And I'm going to tell you right now, dive into a book. Keep your mind occupied. Do what you can for yourself and for your family. Enjoy this time with your family. More importantly, enjoy a good book. Get into your reading. Get into your writing. I want you to know that uh, if there's a poem you want to write, please write one and share it with your family and share it with me. That's one of the challenges I just gave you to, to do as part of your homework since you're at home along with your reading summary. So for now, until we meet again tomorrow, Tuesday, 414, I will sign off at this time, wishing you the best health. Take care of yourself. Strive to stay alive. And think healthy thoughts.